You know, when we are talking about um, changes in healthcare, we usually talk about slow changes. We talk about changes on an axis, chronological axis of months and years and um, feedbacks and checking it and uh, coming back and forth with big budgets. However, there are buts. There are situations where unwillingly you find yourself in a situation which lands you without knowing it at the first line of medical providers uh, worldwide. Our story starts uh, almost two and a half years ago. Sunday afternoon, we are three physicians in the clinic. We're just there by, by chance. Door opens up and a young mid-twenties Russian female patient comes in with a shortness of breath. And as a long-time physicians and led back a bit, uh, you usually connotated to um, some uh, emotional state. But uh, very quickly, we find out that uh, that patient is actually really sick. And once we are looking at the reasons for the short of breath, shortness of breath, we end doing uh, examination of the heart, and we come up to uh, doing an echo. Echo is an ultrasound of the heart. And we find out that the patient is suffering from an inflammation of all three walls of the heart. Now, the heart has an outside wall, inside wall, and a middle wall. Usually, only one of them is inflamed. In her case, all three are being actually damaged. Now, a heart is a muscle. And when this thing cannot do this thing, pumping is not perfect. The blood that comes in is in smaller volumes. And therefore, the oxygenation is um, impeded and very bad. Now, usually, uh, such patients, uh, what we do, we are very, um, we are very uh, uh, we're observative. We give support. But we don't treat the situation per se. It's a very conservative approach. Because of the case, we move the patient to a Vietnamese hospital. And uh, we come in next morning to see the patient. And once we see the patient, we understand very quickly she is really not doing well. And the problem in that is that uh, this, these three uh, heart muscles, which are currently inflamed, which are called pancarditis, in this situation, we will need probably to find a solution to let this heart rest. Now, to let this heart rest is a different story. There is a machine which we are calling, a, we call it in slang, ECMO. And it stands for uh, Extracorporeal Membrane Oxygenator. And this is the machine which is basically what you can do is you disconnect the heart, you disconnect the lung, you move everything around, and you let the heart rest and the muscle build. And hopefully, later on, we switch the patient back. It's a big procedure. I'm saying it in very short, but you have to move the blood vessels. You change blood vessels. So we move the patient to a larger hospital because there's only one machine like this in, uh, in town, size of almost a washing machine. And the team is working on her. And we understand that we really have a problem. Now, it dawns on us very quick that this is a big case. And we have to look on the next stage. Um, next stage means uh, seeking help in one of the neighboring countries. And we understood that we found out that, number one, there is there's very few machines around. Um, number two is that uh, nobody ever moved the patient from a bed with this machine, uh, not to an ambulance, and definitely not by air from country to country. And um, what happened was that uh, we started to call around. And we chose Bangkok as the shortest uh, place to fly to. And we started to look for airlines or aircrafts or air ambulances, which are always so keen to come to Vietnam uh, to take the patient. And we found out that nobody in Asia knows how to do that. Nobody ever flew. Nobody had any experience. The closest team is in Australia. And God knows where they are coming back. 
or when they'll come here, because they do shuttle. And it starts to dawn on us that um, we, we have to find a solution. Not enough, the whole stress that arrives from Russia with a group of people. And um, I am explaining him the risks in this uh, transfer. And uh, I remember the dad looks at me and he tells me, you know, for you, doctor, it's a risk. She's my only child. For me, it's a chance. Now, when a parent tells you something like that, it's undefendable. Uh, you understand that um, there's nothing you can say back. We knew that there is a small transportable machine in Hanoi. We knew how to use it next to a patient bed. We never took it with us and moved it. And worse, um, we uh, were not sure that they have all the parts because it's pretty complicated, complex uh, unit. And I already started at that stage to uh, take a napkin and to start draw a plan and a table of how will this thing look like that we have to take the patient by ourselves. Um, they flew the machine here to uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And I always say that this is the only town where you can really make such a small uh, sketch on a napkin, go to the street of the aluminum shops, and you walk up three hours, three hours later, you walk out with a table ready-made, and if you wait another 20 minutes, it's painted also. And we started to build this, this machine. So we started from a stretcher, where we are going to come to the patient who is already on the bed, scoop the patient on that thing, and the patient obviously is ventilated. On that thing, we have built this famous table. And on the table, we have put a special pump that pumps on the heart. When we move the patient between machines, when she's not on a machine, of course, to this comes a ventilator because she's not breathing, and the ventilator needs oxygen. And oxygen needs, um, and oxygen needs uh, the main unit, which came in. We need another bottle of oxygen because we are not going to switch oxygen as we move because it's, uh, it's time consuming and it's uh, difficult as it is. To this comes a pump. And to this comes a system which is changing the air and the oxygen um, uh, between, uh, between, in the, between the arterial and the venous blood. A monitor. And to the monitor comes a syringe pump because we are maintaining her blood pressure. This is a patient, basically, that is you only, the, the, there's a patient, and there's a whole machinery working for the patient. And at the end, this thing looked like that. And I remember that I had a maid, our maid stood there with a broom, and she's looking at it, and she's asking me, is there a patient going here inside? And um, this is how it looked. The other problem we had is uh, we needed to transport this thing. And we needed an aircraft with a wide door. No aircraft in this region has wide doors. But we find out that Vietnam Airlines has a small plane with propellers called an ATR. ATR-72, these planes are used for domestic uh, use, and they have a cargo door, big cargo door, and it's not high, so we can basically put the patient in. And uh, we borrow, we managed to persuade Vietnam Airlines to borrow such an aircraft. The condition was the aircraft comes at 5 a.m. back to Saigon because at 6 o'clock it flies tourists to Fukuok. And we, of course, we said yes. There was an issue with the partition, we wanted to take the partition out. It was a structural issue. We had to wait till France, where the manufacturer is, was waking up, gives us the OK. At 3 o'clock, we got the OK. And we knew that uh, this mission is on. That night, we are going to make the uh, transfer. The problem was that the aircraft cannot give us power. Now, this is a big, big machinery complex thing. And we need power, and a lot of power. So um, we didn't have much choice. We went downtown to the market, again, like you do in Vietnam. And we bought from one shop 25 motorbike batteries. I think it was their best day of sales. And we uh, have combined these batteries in a way that we put it in a way that we will be able to supply power, because the aircraft is not able to supply us power. 
On the other side, in uh, Thailand, the team will be waiting also. Of course, we need big cars, we need big, uh, big uh, space. Everything is about space. And this is actually how the patient was in the hospital. Now, the move of the patient onto the system, we thought it was going to take us an hour and a half. It took us actually four hours. You disconnect a line, you attach a line. You disconnect the line from their system, you move it to our system, and you watch. The patient doesn't do good, you go back, and, that, and you shuttle forwards and backwards until you get everything done. So from the hospital, down to the elevator, into the car, into the aircraft, and um, the whole thing from the moment we came to the hospital to the moment we were into in the aircraft itself, it was, took almost six hours. Six hours for one patient. This was a night operation, which is making it harder because imagine one of the wires comes out and everything beeps. Now go find out in dark what's wrong and what doesn't work. So what we did is we have taken the patient and we have classified every machine and we attached it to one physician. So one physician was in charge of specific, specific parameters. On top of that, there's a coordinating physician. There are two nurses, and there's a bioengineer which runs around and makes sure that all the electricity, everything works, and that um, we are uh, we're good to go. These are the photographs from the aircraft itself. This is how it looked. Because it's cold up there, and because our blood is warm, we had to use the normal thermal aluminum foil that you use in the kitchen, so we wrapped the blood lines with aluminum foil to keep it warm. This is critical. And you can see the complexity of the wiring and um, how it looked. We did arrive to Bangkok. The patient was offloaded. Again, the whole thing backwards, reached the hospital. We failed to move the patient first time from our machine to their machine. Machines are the same, but they're never exactly the same, but the body is very, in a very exact organ. So the aircraft came back at uh, 5 o'clock on time. The second attempt of moving the patient on the machine was a success. The patient survived. She's alive. She's okay. I don't think that any one of the uh, tourists that flew to Fukuoka at 6 a.m. knew what drama just took place in this aircraft a few hours before. But what we didn't know is that since we were the first in Asia to do it, we found ourselves in a, in a very prestige club of only uh, five countries which are able to perform such a transfer. And, um, you know, uh, it started to dawn on us after you finish the whole thing what we really have, have achieved. We have done since then a few other cases which we were asked to do. The latest case was uh, performed uh, in China with a very, uh, with a, uh, very important personality, and it stemmed the Chinese Ministry of Health actually to uh, create a national team in China for these transfers. Until then, and until this happens, we are currently the only ones who are actually finding ourselves and putting Vietnam into this uh, prestigious club. This is a film of a day transfer. I think the picture talks it all. I mean, people are stressed. Everything is, uh, this is the loading part, which is the most complicated part in the entire process. And it's complicated because everything that can go wrong will go wrong in this, in, this, in this process. This is going to come out and that is going to happen now. You can't allow any glitch. This is, this is, this is a human life here. And worse, this is a human life which works on, on batteries and on machines. And I always thought to myself that, my God, we created something that goes like NASA on motorbike batteries. But um, we have uh, made since then a uh, few of these transfers. And, um, you know, looking at it backwards, I, you know, what, what we learned from it is that um, when failure is no option and human life is at the stakes, we, we, physicians, humans, 
we go a very, very long way to save people. The other thing, which is more to the young generation in, this, in our audiences, you know, when you go into something like this or something similar like that, which you've never done before, and you put balanced, I call it balanced energy into it, I suggest you put more energy into what happens if we succeed rather than in what happens if we fail and what will people say and who will say and we, you know, and loss of face. Thank you very much.